Hey everyone, Ryan from E-Bike Escape. In this video, we are putting the Radwagon 4 with the updated controller to the test. We're going to be doing some performance tests. If you haven't already, be sure to check out our installation video. That gives a few disclaimers and talks about how we were able to install this controller on the Radwagon 4. In this video, I give you an update about how we are able to make the installation a little bit cleaner. And then we also put the Radwagon 4 with the updated controller up against an Aerial Rider D-Class. That's a dual motor electric bike where we can switch between one motor or both. So that was a really interesting test. I hope you enjoy it as much as we had fun testing these bikes out. And I also have some other riding footage and I give you some closing thoughts on the updated controller. And before we get into the content, if you are looking to purchase a Rad Power Bikes, please consider using the link in the description as that helps support e-bike escape. Of course, my other links will be there, my electric bike deals page, as well as my electric bike accessories list. That links to pages where you can purchase products that help support e-bike escape. So thanks in advance. All right, with that, let's get into the Radwagon 4 performance test with the updated controller. All right, so here is version two of the board. You can see it's nicely painted black. It's actually a different piece of wood. Got some countersunk screws or bolts. Looks very professional in my opinion. Fits the frame very nicely. And then underneath, a lot of cable management was done to keep all of the cords out of the way and wrapped and zip tied. So those are all the included bolts and you can cut them off if you use a similar piece of wood so that they don't come in contact with the cables. And then these two screws go directly into the frame yep. where the other controller was attached. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna do some baseline speed test as well as a hill test quick. And we do have an aerial rider D-Class in rear wheel only and we're just gonna show you kind of how fast both of these bikes accelerate the rad wagon 4 is overridden to go about 22 23 miles per hour so this is going to be throttle only all right ready three two one go and 11 13 14 15 and there's our 20 miles an hour, 21, 23. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go zero to 20 again, and now the Aerial Rider D-Class is in dual motor, so we're just gonna see how fast that accelerates. All right, got speed here on the phone. Three, two, one, go. Seventeen, eighteen, twenty, and there is a fair bit of wind today so just keep that in mind okay so now we're gonna go ahead and do our speed with throttle only with the new controller on next to the aerial rider d-class and we'll see how this does okay here we go we're gonna go See how fast this thing goes, throttle only. All right, we got the speed on the cell phone. Ready, three, two, one, go. Oh! Wow, 1500 watts. Oh my goodness. That was crazy. Wow, okay, um, let's do another test. We'll, uh, We'll do another test and you can use both motors. A rad wagon with the original motor against the dual motor aerial rider. We're around the same weight. Brett probably weighs a little bit more than me. All right, got both motors on? I do. Okay, here we go. Got speed on the right. Okay. Three, two, one, go. And it is extremely windy. There's 21 miles an hour, 22 miles an hour. And I think that's about what we're gonna get as far as uh, top speed goes. So one of the things with the controller, at least 
to my knowledge, you get more power to go up hills, but you don't get more top end speed. Okay, here we go. This is the second test. We have a fairly steep hill that's quite long. And so we're gonna see how the performance is with the stock controller, throttle only. And we have positions marked. So when we go back to do the test with the new controller, we can kind of gauge how much faster it is up the hill and how much faster we're going up the hill as well. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. And clearly the aerial rider is much more powerful stock, so 15, 15 miles an hour. And if not, 11, 10. 10. And if necessary, he is going to start pedaling. Again, I don't recommend Eight. you do this with your own electric bike. Eight miles an hour. Seven. This is probably the steepest part of the hill. I'm not sure if it's going to make it up. Seems like it is. Seven and a half. Eight. 738 watts. 744 watts. 10. 11. 14. So based on our throttle only on flat ground, we already know that the Rad Wagon 4 with the new controller is going to do significantly better. Uh, we're going to try to see what it can do on this hill. We're at the same mark that we started at and um, we'll see. We do want to be careful because we just want to be a little bit conservative pushing watts to the motor. So we'll let you know if uh if he starts pedaling and we'll go from there he'll you'll tell me how fast you're going and we'll see what happens all right ready three two one go this is going 20 miles an hour Seventeen miles an hour, and I am going full throttle on rear motor only. I'm going to pedal a little bit to help the motor out. All right. Okay, so. We're gonna do that test again because clearly I need to use both motors on the Aerial Rider D-Class in order to keep up with him. So we'll get a little bit better idea of speed and yeah, you'll let me know. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh. So I'm on pedal assist zero. Oh yeah. No throttle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought I changed that where it would still give you throttle even under zero. Okay. Okay, we're, so, good. we're gonna be good. All right, we're gonna try that again. Yep. False start. Good. <laughs> okay, ready? Three, yep. two, one, go. Eighteen. Eighteen miles 20, an hour. Twenty. 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 Twenty miles an hour. Nineteen. Nineteen. Eighteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Holding at sixteen. Seventeen. All right, I'm using off. I'm gonna pedal. Yeah. So that should demonstrate just how much more powerful the Rad Wagon Four or any Rad Power Bike is going to be with that controller. Obviously, putting many more watts to the motor. Going about 16 on the lower end. No. 
as far as speed up that hill. And then really quickly it recovered and went up to 17. Yeah. And it was fine. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Yeah. I feel like it feels like the front tire is going to like lift up. Well, I don't see. think it's that fast. It feels like that. <laughs> it's a like lot faster. She's, a, she's lighter than I am too though, so that I mean that could be. I feel like I'm like ET flying. Oh, you got a stick. Hold on. I'll get the stick out. <laughs> I Lots really of fun. Feel like e. <laughs> e. Yeah. Oh, because he's like flying through the. Flying on his bicycle. Yeah, through the air. Yeah. It's a lot faster. There you go. Yeah. Holy cow. That is fun. So let's lay it all out there. There are absolutely downsides to the controller, mainly the potential damage to the motor, the decreased range if you're really cranking on your throttle, and of course, voiding your Rad Power Bikes warranty. Others have mentioned that the motor is slightly louder though I didn't notice the difference in my riding. On the plus side, you get a rad power bike with substantially more power, which is especially helpful for hauling large loads on the rad wagon and powering up hills with ease, as you saw in the video. Even in this riding footage that you're watching now, my brother was mostly keeping the motor under 750 watts for the majority of the ride, save for some small hills. As my wife was alluding to, you can definitely feel the acceleration on full throttle, pushing the motor up to 1500 watts or so. For us, the benefit is having the extra power when you need it and still keeping the motor around or under 750 watts most of the time. Speaking of extra power, the advanced settings of the controller is a nice perk. My brother is still playing around with tweaking the settings to his liking and we will probably do a video going through this if there is enough interest. Keep in mind you aren't going to gain a higher max speed here. The bike is still going to top out at around 23 miles per hour, maybe 24 in my testing on flat ground. So while you can of course go out and buy a more powerful electric bike off the shelf, the upgraded controller is a relatively easy way to keep your same bike and just get more out of it. They are for sale at Bolton Electric Bikes and Electro Bike World. I will have links in the description if you're interested. All right, so I hope you found this video helpful. Hope you learned something. We had a ton of fun installing the Bolton e-bikes controller. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Check out my links in the description to the electric bikes I own, my electric bike accessories list, as well as my top e-bike brands page. If you make a purchase, that helps support to make videos like this one. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.